Hey, how's everybody doing? Um, been gone for a little bit. Haven't done any videos in a while. We kind of had some hurricane issues. Hurricane Irma came through. Um, so I've been kind of busy with work and whatnot and, uh, and doing various other things and, uh, and then a touch of laziness too. But, um, I did not stop uh, hunting for stuff and buying comics when I could here and there. And, um, today I wanted to do a little thing on, um, Warren magazines. Um, this is one of my favorite, uh, horror type, uh, titles that I look for. Um, more specifically eerie, um, 1984, uh, creepy when I can find them. Uh, I, I got online because honestly, these things are kind of hard to get a hold of. I don't know that I've ever been into a shop where they actually had any of these in uh, Warren magazines. Um, they're just not super easy to come by. Most of them are silver age, um, started in the, uh, the sixties, these specific titles that, it, that I like to collect. Um, started by uh, James Warren in the fifties. Um, they is an interesting story behind these. Um, they published them through the, the, the late fifties, sixties, seventies, and into the eighties when they finally were ultimately sued and, and went out of business. Um, but I picked up a couple online. Um, I got, actually was, was lucky enough to get, um, Erie number two, which the first Erie is what they call an ash can, which they're kind of hard to get a hold of. Um, this number two is a little easier to get a hold of. It's got a beautiful Frank Frazetta cover. It's actually called the sorcerer. It's one of his works. I uh, love Frank Frazetta. Absolutely fantastic artist was a uh, very prolific fantasy style artist um lucky enough to pick up number three as well also in i would say very fine condition on both of these um also a frank frazetta cover uh super awesome uh then i got issue number 21 i'm not exactly sure who did the uh the cover for this they had a lot of artists um richard corbin was a big contributor cool artist um Heinrich torres was another great artist uh, italian artist there was a slew of italian artists that used to do their covers and um different things like that vampirella is also a title they had um got the eerie um 1970s yearbook which was basically a collection of some of the earlier stories and then I got this bad boy. Uh, well, hang on, I'll, I'll wait on that one. And here's a 1984 was another uh, cool series that they put out, uh, mostly science fiction more than horror. The eerie and the creepy titles are more horror. Really good, super awesome artwork in these things. Um, they actually wanted to stay away from the comic code which they implemented um in the early days of the comics to keep them kind of friendly to all ages um but um james warren didn't want he wanted to have awesome stories for adults so he uh he mag he printed them in magazine size so they could stay away from the code um, and there, it was a magazine, but it's all illustrated stuff. Uh, so it's, it's very akin to comics. I mean, it's very much a comic, but just not that format size and it, they could do pretty much anything they wanted to with it. Well, Marvel jumped on board with some of this stuff too, and they did some titles and this one, uh, Dracula lives was one of the, uh, Marvel magazine size. Uh, I actually picked this up for 10 bucks and I was like super stoked because it's in superb condition. Uh, this is a Boris Vallejo cover, another prolific artist kind of in the same vein as Frank Frazetta. Uh, just love those guys. Um, picked up, just recently picked up, a an art book of Frank Frazetta's, uh, actually two art books. It's like, uh, 
just a, a book of just his artwork and it talks about how he got started and stuff like that. Um, also, just yesterday, picked up uh, the first appearance of Magus. I got this for like 10 bucks, something like that. It's pretty cool. It's kind of off subject, but um, ju I just picked that up, so I threw that in there. But yeah, I uh, I really enjoy collecting the um, the Warren Magazine stuff. Um, always on the lookout for it. Nine times out of ten, I either have to be at a convention or shop online to get these because I just do not run into them in the shops ever. Um, the shops in my area, just they just don't have them. Um, whether it's because the shop owners stay away from them or whatever it is, but they're... A little bit more um, difficult to find um, yeah comment um, glad to be back I'll be doing some more regular videos I'm kind of got done with the busyness of my life and uh, for now at least <laughs> um, but hope to hear from you guys um, hunt what you read read what you hunt save some for me thanks